see. Great morning, great morning, great morning, Houston. Great morning, Midtown, Downtown, Third Ward, Fifth Ward. Those of you listening in the car at 102.5 FM, great morning to you that are tapped in through our free KMAZ app. And great morning to you that are listening on our website at www.amazing1025fm.org. I'm Amanda Sapp. We're here at Amazing 102.5 FM, your do good through good station where we're changing lives one listener at a time. Y'all know I'm always so excited to bring you amazing guests that are doing amazing things in amazing ways. I cannot wait to share with you who I have in the studio with me today. If you're someone who is an entrepreneur and you are doing, well, actually, if you're a serial entrepreneur, I think that this conversation that we'll have today is one that you'd be quite interested in. Yeah. This person I have in the studio with me today, he is an artist. He is a father. He is a leader. He is Kevo, the artist. Great morning. Good morning to you as well. Good How morning. are you today? I'm great, man. I'm blessed. Everybody, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm yeah. feeling great. I'm you look good. good today. Thank you. You look good yourself. I appreciate that. Even without my eyelashes on. I don't have my eyelashes on today. That's how I know today's going to be a good show okay. today with you. Okay. Kevo, for somebody who's just hearing about you for the very first time, tell us a little bit more about you. Well, I am a artist. I, uh, I teach at Lone Star. I teach art. I teach painting. I teach art history and art appreciation. I have owned my own tattoo studio since 2010, Kebo's Tattoos. Uh, it's a private studio now, and I am a painter, and uh, yeah, I do a lot of art stuff in the community, so mm -hmm. I think that's like the gist of, of me. Okay. Well, I'd love to hear that. Now, I want to get a little bit deeper with you. Uh, I want our listener to hear this interview and say, oh my gosh, this is quite compelling. I understand. I understand that you had an article out about you uh, entitled From Inmate to Entrepreneur. Tell yes. me a little bit about that. <laughs> so Let's get right into so it. So <laughs> I am a, I am an entrepreneur and I always say I'm, a, I'm an artist, right? Because I, I do movies, I do plays, I do all of this stuff. Um, but prior to me doing all of this, I was very well known in the streets for selling drugs and stuff. When I was younger, um, People who know me personally know that I grew up without my parents. So I had a very, very, very troubled childhood. You know what I mean? So in high school, I would be selling drugs and I would be in and out of jail. When I got out of high school, I got charged with an aggravated robbery. I had gun charges. I had drug charges. And I beat my cases while I was in jail. When I got out of jail, I still, I didn't like stop. You know, I, I continued to do what I was doing and I ended up getting shot. So I ended up getting what? Shot. S-H-O-T. Yeah, the bullet's still in my arm. You I will are let you, kidding. I will let you feel it, but I'm it, gonna feel it's anyway. cold Where outside. It's going to be hurting. It's We're right here, here on like, your left arm. Yes, yeah, here. So you were shot. And you're, it's, it's right, right here. I can feel it. Spot, yeah. He has a whole bullet yeah, in his arm. It's crazy, yeah. Why is this here? What happened? Um... I'm in situations like when I was younger, I was always like, uh, I don't want to sound like a big tough guy, but I just was, that was my thing. So in certain situations, I wanted people to know that, that they were, I'm not, can I curse on that? You can't curse. <laughs> they Say were, it it sounds like. they were the weaker being and okay. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is still the, uh, a reputation of violence for me. So there was a fight going on and what they weren't about to fight me. So mm -hmm. they start shooting and mm -hmm. I grabbed my home girl cause they were shooting mm -hmm. and I ended up getting shot cause mm -hmm. I didn't want her to get shot. So mm -hmm. I cover her mm -hmm. and I ended up getting shot and I knew they weren't going to fight me. Mm -hmm. So I grabbed her and tried to run away. And when I ran with her, <laughs> she, uh, she, she got away. They ran off and I didn't have a gun at the time to shoot back, but, after that, every other shootout I was in, I definitely shot back. How many shootouts have you been in? <laughs> well, I mean, What's I'm, happening here? I'm an artist now. <laughs> I'm not the, I'm not the, the gangster in the streets yeah, kept yeah. anymore. But back then, maybe about four, I'll say. Yeah. But I've only been shot once and grazed another time. This is not normal. I know it's not. That's what's amazing about my story is that, uh, you know, with art, and with education, a lot changed for me. You know what I'm saying? So I got to get that back to people. Because that's what the world gave me, in my opinion. Did art save you? 
Definitely. Uh, because it was always there. That's the thing about love, though, like especially with people, mm -hmm. you know, you'll think that sometimes people save you like not just art. People did, too. Mm -hmm. They were always there. Like my supporters. It didn't really matter when I was thug life. <laughs> when I'm art, the same people are still there. The same art is still there. You just got to accept it and appreciate it. This is so good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I know it's good, though. I've got Kevo in here with me today. He is an artist. He's yeah. a survivor. For sure. And For sure. Um, he is teaching art and um, in at Lone Star College. Yeah. And, um, sharing. Uh, do you share your story? Um, no, nah, I don't. I don't really tell them. Um, I, I think that uh, I try not to sound like too pretentious. And then also I, I try not to be. Uh, sometimes it kind of annoys me that uh, that's all that some people talk about. Like, I feel like I'm. Uh, this is my third play this year, stage play. Uh, I think I've, I've written se maybe seven or eight books, you know, and then when I tell people I've been shot or I've been in jail, that's all they want to talk about. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's it's not that I'm offended or anything, but most of my students, I don't share that with them mm -hmm. um, or even colleagues. Well, I, I share it in entertainment aspects because I know it makes sense. You know, it's entertainment. And also it's a part of my story, but students, I really don't, I really don't care to. So, Kevo, mm -hmm. go through this um, dramatic experience. I would call it dramatic. If I was shot in any part of my body, yeah. I don't know that I how to what I would think, recover, would I be traumatized? I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, and then you're in jail, all these different things, and even even that. How long were you incarcerated? For the longest one was about a year, but other times, just like a month or mm -hmm. two weeks or something. Sure. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't consecutive. It just happened over time, over the course of those years. Understood. And so but my last charge, I, it was either a drug or a gun charge. Uh, the guns were mine. That's were why or were not. they were. They That's really why were. I got out of jail. Like mm -hmm. you know, so the la my last time was like, bro, I'm not going to jail anymore. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I became too institutionalized, and I was like, yo, mm -hmm. this is becoming too normal. Mm -hmm. I it came to a point where I was like. All right, I know what to do. Just handcuff me. Yeah, sure. You know, let's hurry up and get there, and let me, you know, make sure I got some money. It, I didn't like that it. I was in, institutionalized. I remember thinking that in there is like, this shouldn't be normal, bro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you go through these experiences in your mind. You tr you have in my from what I'm hearing, you have altered your own mindset for sure in this experience, and you say, enough is enough. Yeah, definitely. Point. Yeah, you get out. You decide I'm going to turn to art. You realize that the people that were were there have always been there, and they will be there. Yeah. And you can move forward and create all of these different endeavors. Now you're talking about a stage play. Uh -huh. Well, first let me go back. You've written seven books. You said seven. Uh, maybe more, but yeah, let's say seven. Okay. <laughs> it like, sounds like it was before you could just type up something on uh, Chat GPT and create. Oh no, nah, I ain't doing no Chat GPT. That's not a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, not for to write a book. I'm not, you know, it, to help me, like probably write an email. I will. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So you write seven books. Yeah. And then um, you get to this point to where you're now a serial entrepreneur. You also create a stage play. Tell me about this stage play and what are you talking about in it? Uh, my last stage play was called "What Do We Do Now." It, we uh we did it in this summer. Uh, last well yeah in the summer and um we're gonna release it to streaming next year um this current stage play is about who i feel is the most interesting artist ever it's about vincent van gogh and and i my initial comments like number one statement i kept getting back was like how can you do a van gogh play if you're black mm -hmm. and i i have a lot to say about that but I, honestly i just wanted to really <laughs> I feel like in our entertainment as in black culture, we don't have enough infotainment. Like we don't have enough educational stuff mm -hmm. and there ain't nothing wrong with that. Like, I feel like it's a place for black people to like educational stuff. So what do we do now was about black history and Vincent Van Gogh is about an artist that is the most interesting artist that you could ever come across. Vincent Van Gogh is not for just white people to me, you know, <laughs> he's an artist for all people. So I was like, I'm gonna write this play, and I'm gonna write it in a in a format that's gonna be different. I, I wrote it as a performance play. That way, it wouldn't be, in my opinion, so boring 
just act one, act two, act three, like a normal format. And I, once I did my table reads, I submitted it to festivals. And everything I ever write, I always submit it. What do we do now? I submitted it to about seven, mm-hmm. and it and it won one award. Mm. The Van Gogh stage play, I submitted it to ten festivals. It won eight awards. Mm. It lost in one festival, and one of them is still pending. So I didn't even expect that to happen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it won best script four times in four different festivals. Like immediately, I was like, "Oh, <laughs> I'm on to something." <laughs> but but no offense to what do we do now? I love that play, sure. but I was really surprised that I would get that many awards for Vincent Van Gogh. But isn't that how you know that you're on to something, right? Yeah, that's how you know. Yeah, people in the background talking about you know. Why, why, why? Exactly. Who, why black. Do yeah, that, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And then here you are determined, steadfast. I'm going to do this. Yeah, definitely. And I, I surprised myself because yeah. I, I'm not going to lie. I didn't expect it. The first one, I think it was best short script. And I and they left a comment. Somebody said, this is the most creative thing I ever read in my life. Mm. <laughs> so I was like, wow, that's crazy. Mm. That's crazy. I guess they thought it was going to be like a story, but it's not just like that. Uh, in the Van Gogh play, I'm playing Van Gogh, so I have to paint Starry Night, his most famous painting, and I'm going to paint it the entire time the play is going. So while I'm painting, they're acting. So I'm there in spirit. You Are know you what I mean? Are you actually painting? Yeah, I'm going to okay. do a live painting. And um, the biggest reason why, you know, I have to play it, because I don't know anybody that can paint that fast. <laughs> you know, I don't know anybody that can paint a Van Gogh and act at the same time. You know, like, I don't I don't know anybody else to do it. So when you ask, <laughs> how can you play Van Gogh if you're black? Like, who else is going to paint, mm-hmm. act? <laughs> you know what I'm the saying? Vex. Who else is going to do all this? Let me you ask you, me? what is it about Van Gogh that resonates with you? A lot, man. Now, I remember the first thing I, I ever learned about Van Gogh. I was reading a Tupac poem. And he had a poem dedicated just to Van Gogh. Mm-hmm. And I never saw that word before. So I was like, who is Van Gogh? Mm-hmm. And then it re-resonated later on in my life. And I was like, oh, this is an artist, Van Gogh. Uh, and I think the most popular thing about him that people hear is that he cut off his ear. Mm-hmm. And that he was like some crazy artist. And I think that when you talk about, I mean, I tell myself in my head I'm the best artist. But when you talk about art. You said you wake up in the morning and tell yourself. Yeah, I do tell myself mm-hmm. that. When you talk about art, I think that um, it's too subjective to call someone the best. So I think what separates the artists is how interesting they are. And for me, when I think of artists, I I think of Picasso. I think of uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. I think of Caravaggio, Peter Paul Rubens, myself. I think of Prince. I even think of Prince a lot. Um, But with Van Gogh, his story in particular is so rare and unique that I think it's the most, he's the most interesting artist ever. Like when you just hear little things like he cut off his ear or he only made art for 10 years or he um, wrote thousands of letters and kept them in this, in this house for his brother. Some letters he would send, some letters he would not. And almost every letter was about art. It's like he gave us a catalog throughout history (laughs) of how to make art and he was not appreciated in his lifetime. He died, and he's the first person to be like, oh, now you're great when you die. Like, that that happens now a lot, you know what I mean? But he's the first one of, he got appreciated after his death. And I just think he's just super, super worthy of all his appreciation. Now, you talk about this play going into um, streaming. Yeah, yeah, Can yeah. it be turned into a movie, or is that the same thing? That's the same thing. It's uh, we, We're filming it, so we're going to film it and then make it a movie, and then it'll be out streaming next year. But uh, I'm also doing another play next year, too, though. Let's talk about that. Yeah, what is the next play? And oh, my gosh. What, what is it about? Uh, the next play, everybody's going to love it. It, My girl, she she's not she goofy, but she's not goofy like me. Mm-hmm. So she don't laugh much. So <laughs> when we first read this play out loud like she laughs but not like me i'll laugh at anything she was on the floor crying laughing mm-hmm. she was like how did you come up with this mm-hmm. you know like the 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 next play is a it's called adam's apple it's about adam and eve mm-hmm. it is so funny like it is like it's it's uh it's about them and their beef with the devil so they're <laughs> beefing with the devil the whole time he keeps trying to get them 
and it, it just won't work. Like he like he tries his hardest to get them to eat these apples, but he he eventually gets Eve, of course. <laughs> but he it, it's like a a very creative version of <clears throat> how we can look at them in modern time. And I have it in as a vampire story also. So it's like the devil's actually like some vampire. But the the tickets for this play, the email list, um, everybody who buys a ticket to the Vincent Van Gogh play will have a free ticket to the Adam and Eve play because that That's one right. would be private. Mm -hmm. So we're not we're only selling like so like maybe like 30 tickets to Adam and Eve, and the rest of the tickets would just be the people who were free because we need a it's the Adam and Eve play is only going to be shot to film. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be, you're basically going to come watch us film. So, <laughs> so it's not going to be like a normal, you come watch the play. You're actually going to be there for a long time and you can come and go as you please. Kevo, if I, if you had to choose between being a painter, a yeah. filmmaker, an author, stage play producer, a teacher, a, or, or work at a tattoo studio that you actually own, yeah. What would you choose? Yeah, it depends on when you ask me. Mm -hmm. I think my answer would change. That's why I call myself an artist. But I think off the top of my head, I thought tattoos immediately. Uh, t the tattooing connects me socially with people. Um, and I, and no offense to my friends. I love my friends, but I don't. I don't have a social life. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, well, so, doing all these things. So, you yeah, I don't. Why? Yeah, but those things are very um, internal. You know what I mean? They're very innate. So art is, I have to be isolated to do them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So so the only one I don't have to isolate myself to do is the tattooing. Because the stage play, the production is with people, but most of the work is behind the scenes. I have to sell this play. I have to produce i have to pay for stuff i have to get you know you have to do stuff done you rehearse but that's work you know and i think tattooing is like um <clears throat> the best one-on-one -on -one, and it's organic as well it's not like when i'm teaching i have to be in teacher mode uh i have to i can still be myself but there's still a handbook in between me and the student <laughs> you know what i mean so i think for sure uh when people book tattoos with me i think that's like for now i think that's a that would be my go-to answer what would you tell 21-year-old <clears throat> Kevo um, today? Wow. That's crazy. When I was 21, when I was 21, I think I was thinking about getting a shop. I was thinking about getting a tattoo studio. I was like, man, I'm, I don't want to sell dope no more. <laughs> I'll probably be like, man, you have no idea. I would never think I will write a, a, a stage play about Van Gogh, to be honest with you. I think out of all the stuff I've, I'm doing, though, I think that I'm most surprised that I teach than anything. Like, <laughs> I can't imagine. Why, like, why is that surprising? Because, like, I'm thinking about being 21. Mm -hmm. Sit in a trap house. Mm -hmm. Somebody kick my door and I start shooting at them. I never think this person would be teaching in a college. <laughs> like you know, what I mean? yeah. just, but at the end of the day, I'm just defending myself. You know, it sounds crazy, but if you go back to it, it's like I'm just a product of my environment, and I didn't belong in that environment. So my frequency belonged in a different environment. You know what I mean? So I think I would be like, man. I think I wouldn't even be able to tell myself that because I wouldn't believe it. I'd be like, man, shut your behind mm -hmm. up. You don't know what you're talking about. Those are the best teachers, though, right? <laughs> Those that have experienced things that we can't even fathom. Yeah, yeah. You, you know? have no idea. I need to tell my daughter that because it's like, if I could tell myself that, I'd be like, yeah, you crazy. Because because to her, what I'm doing is normal, you know? So she probably looks at it like, you would have believed yourself. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I would not have believed myself if when I was your age. I would be naive and not listen. What do you say to people who say you should focus on one thing? See, so you have several. But it's still art, though. You it know, still art. it's art. It's, it's I art. think that focusing on one thing is better, though. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think um, that what 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 makes me a great artist is that the things that I do falls under art. I understand. You know, if I was trying to do sports, it would be kind of different. So I think um, the one thing is fine, 
but I have a lane for everything. I, I remember uh, Mike Tyson said this. He he said his trainer told him in a fair fight he would beat up everybody in the world, <laughs> and I and I think like in a fair art competition I would be like very, I would do very very well. Like if you had like different categories of art, so to stick to one is tough because it all is still art. Maybe I don't know if it's writing, maybe yeah, or painting. Still mentioning more things. I know, right? Than one. Yes, yeah, it's hard. It's, you know, hard. I understand. it's hard. It's hard. Now, um, you brought something for us today. Oh or yeah, yeah, me, yeah. For you, say. I got you one. Of the, I couldn't find a smaller <laughs> one in this color. I'm like, I like this color more. The Vincent Van Gogh hoodie. I got you a gray one. I though. love it. <laughs> I, I, love gifts. <laughs> I love gifts. I love gifts. I got. Can, can we I have open? A, yeah, for thing. sure. Yeah, it's this the same me. thing. Yeah, it's I got to put this on now. Nah, I hope y'all don't mind. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, it's not. A, it's getting cold outside. It's getting you know. Cold. Oops, I'm sorry. Yeah, you good. You're good. Okay. You're, it's okay. Um, it's okay. It's okay. I love you're this. Still gonna open if you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You good? Love gifts. I, I didn't know if you was a coffee drink. I was gonna bring I you this Vincent Van Gogh mug because we have for the merchandise for the show. We have like a lot of merch and we have mugs and blankets. I was like, I'll just get a hoodie. That's safe. I love but this. Yeah. Thank you very much. Somebody must have told you my size because this looks perfect. Oh, it's, yeah. Well, I just got I it right. I love this. We've got Kevo here. I in saw you on Instagram and I was like, yeah, oh. she bought it. Yes, <laughs> <about it." laughs> love it. We've got Kevo here in the building today. He's a serial entrepreneur. Yeah. He's an artist, a father, and leader. And he's got a new play coming out. When is it again? Christmas Eve. Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve. Yeah. This Sunday. How, how are the, are people going to come? Uh, they better. It's um. <laughs> I, they go to Nutcracker. They go to they Christmas do. Carols. Yeah. They go. I just went to. I a, just meant because of the day. Yeah, I know what you yeah. mean. I think, but you know what I do. Um, I I heard Martellus Bennett say this. He's um football. He's ex NFL player. He was like he's in charge of the art in his family, and he was like he always goes to plays during Christmas season. And I said me too. Like I was thinking, I was like I always do that. So when I was looking for a date for this play, mm-hmm. the theaters were all booked except on Christmas Eve. I was like. I hope people come, but I think I think it's families mil- that have that appreciate that type. Of yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's it's either. millions of people in Houston. It's a, like it's a couple, mil- yeah, it's millions of people here. Yeah, we can get a couple hundred people. They will here. certainly come. Yeah, yeah. Better y'all better pull up and support me. <laughs> How do they get tickets? Um, matchhouston.org, or you can Google it. The Van Gogh play, the Vincent Van Gogh play, and it it pops up immediately in Houston because there's only one of them. So, yeah. well, out of all of the things that you have experienced <clears throat> in your life, what are you most proud of about yourself? Man, my my relationship with my daughter that's my that's my heart right there, man. <laughs> that's my girl right there. I have oh, two daughters. You, what's her name? No offense to my second daughter. <laughs> I get it. I just had her. <laughs> we oh, just had you. another little girl. So, Congrats. you know, she only eleven months, but my ten yeah. year old is my. <laughs> That's my that's my dog right there, man. You make me cry for her, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> that's my dog right there. What's so special about your 10-year-old that just won't get out of your head? I think it was the happiest moment of my life. My my not well, up until that point. You know, like if I had other happy moments, mm-hmm. that was fine. But then like since then I haven't had another like, oh my God, I'm so happy. Like, you know, it was just crazy. Mm-hmm. And then don't make me cry, please. <laughs> I just want to know. <laughs> I just want to know. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about her or that moment and what uh, it did for you? I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. It's just, it's just crazy, bro. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, now it's both of them though because sure, was- I didn't, I didn't grow up with a family. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just, it's perfect though. Ah, don't be doing that to me because I, I don't be crying like that. <laughs> Why, if you're watching this, I'm sorry for crying. No need for apologies, please. Because you're going to see this, and they're yeah. going to be like, This is how my dad feels about me. I mean, they know, yeah, but to have to, to express that to other people, I'm gonna tell, know. I'm gonna be like, Uh, I was acting. <laughs> no, you won't. You meant everything. <sighs> no, I'm just fine. I mean, everything, but yeah, but yeah, that's crazy. That's my. I can't. That's my girl. That's my. That's my, well, my girls. But you know. so, do you feel it your responsibility to give your daughters what you didn't have? Like you said, you didn't have. Uh, look, that's now a part of it. That, that's you know? a part of it. But they they remove 
at the same time they remove the resentment you know what sure. i mean so Absolutely. so you don't really feel that way like you think you do until like, they come and then you're like you don't know what your parents been through you know sure. like in my case my parents were just not involved you know what i mean until i met them as i got older but like i don't have a connection like a real genuine connection to them so even when I had issues with my name because my name was changed. So Were you I used adopted to, or what, well, I it's understand. a very confusing situation because I would have been adopted, but my aunt came and got me and my grandmother. So my real family raised me, mm -hmm. but I, they took me from adoption place. So I would have been adopted, but my last name is my father's last name. So I don't have any connection to my mother's last name or my father. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just always been, but that's why I said like they'll they'll remove that little resentment because it's like it doesn't that they, they make the past not matter mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so it's a very weird happiness weird. yeah it's well good place. it's a wonderful yeah it's a wonderful <laughs> happiness I love it Kevo yeah. is here in the <clears throat> studio with us today he's gonna share his tears oh um, man <laughs> this video with his daughters I'm and, I'm uh, gonna show her every part except that part. <laughs> We're just glad to have you here and appreciate you sharing your story with us today and being vulnerable with us. No need for I, I apologies. Didn't, I didn't think that was going to happen, but <laughs> it happened. I'm glad that it did. Um, Kevo, you got your stage play, and people can go to uh, MatchHouston. Yeah, for sure. Uh, dot com to find out more. And uh, it's the day after Christmas, so for those of you who are looking for something to do with your family, your friends during the holidays, you've got an opportunity to experience something that hasn't been done before. Facts, I love facts, it. Facts. I love it. Uh, Kevo, if you, um, we'd like to leave our fans, followers, listeners, and supporters with something inspiring, something empowering, something they can take with them the rest of the day, the rest of the week, and all the way up to the weekend. What do you want to leave us with today? That art is wonderful because it lasts forever. <laughs> it lasts forever. <laughs> and how do we find you? Uh, Kevo Arts on Instagram or artbykevo.com. My tickets are also on artbykevo.com. So. <laughs> Perfect, perfect. See, I made you cry. You by made crying. me cry. I'm all <laughs> teary eyed this morning. Yeah, I, it's special. Yeah, it was because it's real. It's, it's genuine. Real. You know what I mean? And when you get to live your art every day. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's unexplainable. Guys, I'm going to leave you with the same thing I always leave you with. Be the change you want to see. And if not you, who? If not now, when? This is the Amanda Sapp Morning Show, an amazing 102.5 FM. You are do good through good station. We're changing lives one listener at a time. Until next time. Route. For sure.